Making your own servo extensions, or indeed altering the length of existing servo leads, is easy and quick if you use the correct tools. This little tutorial should talk you through and walk you through the whole process. For extra information and help on the subject, why not visit modelflying.co.uk. Let me just run through the operation of the crimping tool before we actually get round to doing the job. You can see here in the open, fully extended position, the jaws are wide open and the handles are apart. As you slowly squeeze the handles, the ratchet will catch at each stage. When we get to the end, as you can see the jaws closing up more and more, they're still locked together until you get to the stage where at the very end you'll hear a louder click. There. At that point the handles will release. This prevents the crimping tool from squeezing too hard and distorting the plug. It just ensures that you always end up with exactly the right amount of tension applied to the wings on the uh, connector so that there's no chance of damage or distortion. OK, let's have a closer look at the actual connector pins. There's two sets of wings, clamping wings, one on the extreme end which goes around the insulation of the wire. The inner set here are the ones that actually make the connection onto the copper core of the wire. A mistake that many beginners make when using the crimping tool is to actually insert the cable from the wrong side. Of course you can see that it can be put in from this side or indeed from the back side. Another mistake that can be made is the actual tool could be held upside down and of course this also interferes with the correct crimping operation. To make life easier for myself I've actually put a label on my clamps and you can see it in indicating to me the wires must go in from this side. Wings down is referring again back to the connector and another mistake that sometimes people make is to put the connector in the wrong way around inside this part of the jaw. It must go in with these little wings that we talked about earlier pointing down into the bottom of the crimping tool. Taking a look at the actual crimping tool you can see that in the, in the jaws, at the end of the section of jaws, there is a small step and the outer step here is the one that clamps the outer wings and the inner step being slightly higher will just uh, crimp down nicely the inner wings onto the core of the connecting cable. OK, first job after cutting the cable to the required length is we need to make a nice neat straight cut across the end of this rather jagged mess that we have at the moment. I'm using side cutters. You could perhaps use the cutting blades on your insulation strippers. So nice and level and straight right across the end of all three wires. Now we need to remove about one-eighth of an inch of the insulation. So we can feed the whole cable into the automatic wire strippers measuring off about an eighth of an inch and strip. There we have three nice cable, three nice wires all bared off ready for the plug. Okay you can see here I've stripped back the three individual wires about an inch or so just to give yourself some room to play and uh, also um, we've uh, carefully twisted together all the individual strands in each wire to uh, make sure we have a nice neat job. Now before we actually try to do the first crimping operation we need to temporarily get the connector pin gently clamped onto the wire that we're working on. It doesn't matter which wire we do in which order they all have to be done. So insert it carefully so that the copper section of the wire is in those inner uh, wings that we talked about before just temporarily hold it there with your uh, with your thumb and then using a small pair of either needle pliers or in this case I'm using my little uh, cutters just gently I'm going to just nip up slightly the outer wings so that it holds itself freestanding on the cable ready for insertion into the tool okay let's let's do the first cable remembering make sure 
that the crimping tool is the correct way up. The jaws are fully open at the moment. We have our first wire with our connector temporarily gently squeezed onto the insulation. Turning the wings downwards, we insert it into the jaw at the end. We make sure that the end of the connector is flush with the side face of the jaws of the crimping tool and slowly start to squeeze. Wait for the louder click. There it is. And release. Here I'll show you how to insert the pins actually into the plug. There are three little um, tongues, little plastic tongues, on the plug as you can see. And these lock the pin in place once it's pushed in sufficiently. Sometimes it's a bit of a job just to get the plug, at the pin to push in completely. So I, I, I use the small jeweler screwdriver. But uh, we'll, we'll have a go with that first. So holding the plug, uh, holding the pin so that the wings are facing upwards, checking that we have the right pin going into the right socket, the uh, signal on the bottom in this case, which is the white lead. So we insert and push home until we hear a small click. And just to prove my point it needs a little bit of persuasion so I use this tiny jeweler screwdriver and just give it that little touch further and it's locked in place. Repeat for the other two leads, job done.